Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are going to be talking about how you can travel more with a full-time job. So today is another blog post turn video because I realized that some people prefer to read, like myself, than watch a video. And then some people prefer watching videos than reading the blog post. That's perfectly fine. If you've been following with my journey, then you know that a few months ago I actually left my 9 to 5 to pursue my travel writing and just traveling indefinitely full-time. But for years and years, um, I want to say since I was 18, even though I got my, my first job when I was 15, but since I was 18, you know, I had been working full time and it was the last three years in New York where I had traveled like I had never thought I would be able to travel before. Um, it was outside of the traveling in January for my friend's birthday and then traveling in September for mine. I was heading somewhere every other month. That became my goal. And then I want to say in 2017, the goal became to travel somewhere every month. But things changed at my job. And so after six months of traveling at least once a month, I think five out of those six times were international. And then throughout the summer, I started traveling domestically, just back and forth to home or places like Atlantic City. But that goal had my job not screwed it up for me, that goal would have been accomplished. And I would have been in a different country every single month of 2017 but ish happens so i want to share my knowledge and the things that i was doing the techniques that helped me with you i live by the motto book first ask questions later so if you're like me and you may be in a forum where they post flight deals all day or you follow secret flying or the flight deal which that has always been my go-to and that's always the first i recommend theflightdeal.com um sign up for their newsletters get their emails daily and see if they have any good flights from or to a city near you so if you're like me and you just see flights coming through all day you may come across one that is so irresistible so the one that I always talk about is my $124 round trip flight from New York to the Dominican Republic, Santo Domingo to be specific. And I always talk about that flight because that, it was one of, it was the cheapest flight I had ever booked at the time and it's still one of them. Um, I actually don't think I've booked anything less except, you know, getting credits off of flights or using miles and then paying maybe five bucks as the taxes and fees. But $124 to an international country, it's kind of unheard of. If you're a frequent traveler like myself, then you see it from time to time, but it's still not an often type of thing. It's, it's still pretty rare. So that means when you do see one of these flights come through Twitter or Facebook, or maybe you're my friend and I'm texting you like, girl, I grabbed this flight, like you need to get it too. Book it, just book it. Nine times out of ten, the airline will give you the option to cancel within 24 hours. So that also gives you time to do like I would do a lot of times. Uh, knock, knock. Hey there, boss. Uh, do you mind if I'm off this date to this date? Cool. Okay, cool. And everything usually works out. Um, I, I don't really hear people saying their boss denied their days or they couldn't make it work. But I say book it and then cancel within that 24 hours if things just aren't looking up. Another thing about booking these cheap flights is that the flight may be like 80 bucks, but once you get there, the cost of living is super high or it's someplace like, I hear this about Turks and Caicos or Barbados, um, everything is imported. So a box of Frosted Flakes could run you like 10 bucks. I know that Airbnbs may not be what I would like for them to be there and maybe the only other option is maybe a, a four star or five star luxury resort which I'm not paying for I don't care if I can afford it or not so that's a flight that I may book for 80 bucks and then once I did a little bit of research sitting at my desk clickety clacking I realized this is a little bit out of my budget and price range and I changed my mind about it real quick cancel the flight that's the most that can happen and if you're scared to book first and ask questions later, you may miss out on the flight sale, but it's still worth 
contacting maybe the third party carrier like Priceline is a third party operator and you ask them do they have a 24 hour cancellation policy or you get familiar with these sites before the flight even comes through and you read up on their terms and conditions if you can cancel within a day book the flight as questions later. Another thing that is very important when it comes to booking these flights is being flexible. So if you need to travel from August 1st to 7th Searching for those dates may make it hard for you and it may be super, super expensive. You need to be flexible so if you have maybe some time you could take off in all of August, look at the conditions of the flight. Is it only this price from the 3rd through the 9th? Can you do that instead? Be flexible. I cannot stress that enough. The second thing that I recommend when traveling and you have a full-time job or any type of job where you can't just be like, peace, I'll see you in two weeks, you need to compare. So yes, I say book the flight and ask questions later, but sometimes I take, you know, a quick 30 seconds to make sure I can't find that flight cheaper anywhere else. Or if they have a 24-hour cancellation policy, I almost always book it and then do some research for about 30 minutes and that's pushing it like that's over the top but I just like to be thorough I do a little bit of research and make sure I can't find this flight for days that are absolutely perfect for me or for cheaper elsewhere and it's important you don't want to lose out on possibly hundreds of dollars or even $25 I feel like there's a flight I had one time there was when I went to Cuba um, I booked it with an airline and it was a really really good sale and then I realized that I had this Delta credit card where I could get $100 off my flight do I still have that credit card I might still have it I could get $100 off the flight and it was a little bit cheaper so I paid $104 for my flight versus the 200 that I would have paid with the other website I know that vacation time or PTO is very, very important when you're working with a full-time job. So when I started my last company, we were given 25 days off. That's because we were a global company or I was with a global company. They're still very much global. And the sister company was located in Zurich. In Zurich or the EU, um, they get 25 days off. They get five weeks paid time off. It's just a thing. That's why you'll find Australians and Europeans in America for like, oh, I'm here for three weeks here in New York just chilling. Like, they got it like that, mostly. So our company in the U.S. tried to match that when at first they were on a sliding vacation scale. I came in when I was automatically getting 25 days off. However, in 2017, my vacation was cut drastically because of issues with the company. It was nothing I did. It was nothing anyone else did. It's just, if you were there for X amount of years, which I was one of the latest people to be hired, then your vacation days were cut back to 10. So, I kind of think I can talk to you about if you have just 10 days or maybe 14 days vacation time and how you can still travel more. So... I have a list of steps when it comes to that. So step one, book around weekends. Saturday and Sunday can automatically be added to your vacation time if you book around the weekends. There were plenty of times where I would just put into request a Friday and a Monday off and you best believe I wasn't like in Virginia Beach, I wasn't in Miami or LA. I was in Portugal, I was in Spain, I was in France. There is so much that you can do with just four days vacation time. So the first thing I always recommend is to book around a weekend. That is two automatic days added into your vacation schedule. So if you have a full week somewhere Monday through Friday, why not leave the Friday night before and add that Saturday and Sunday and then come back the next Sunday night, including that Saturday and Sunday. That automatically turns a five-day vacation into a nine-day vacation. And I have done this before. I think I've done it with Bali and I've done it with Thailand just because I'm losing out on an entire day of travel just getting there. So I like to book around weekends and I also recommend booking around a holiday. Now, I'm the type of person where I don't need to spend every holiday with my family, or any for that matter. So the only reason I'm here in D.C. is because I came for Christmas for my mom. I miss Thanksgiving and I vowed to come home for Christmas. It's also winter everywhere that I want to go, so I figured I'd let that settle in elsewhere and just stay here a little bit longer and I get to spend time with her and then go all for a couple months traveling. 
So if you don't have to spend Easter with your family or Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, what's another? Fourth of July, like do you need to be with your family then? Use that time and especially if it falls around a weekend, book a vacation, book a trip. It'll be amazing spending an actual holiday elsewhere and you get to see if others celebrate it, how they celebrate it, or just relax, which I like to do, go somewhere and relax. I especially would mark off on my calendar all of the holidays that fell on a Monday because I'll get Saturday, Sunday, and that Monday to add to my vacation. It is a win-win, win situation. Why are you not doing this? My third tip when scheduling vacation time off is to realize how much time you really need in a place. So I do a lot of European vacations because from the East Coast, it's pretty convenient. If I needed to work on a Friday, all day Friday and not just take a half day then hop on a plane I could do that from the East Coast at least I could comfortably work go home grab my luggage maybe wait around a half an hour to two hours and then hop on an 8 p.m. 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. flight to Europe I've done it several times you then land in the destination in the morning and then you have a full day there to explore maybe grab a bite to eat settle in if you can check in that early and you have a full day to explore you miss no time in this new city. I also live by the motto in addition to book first ask questions later. I live by the saying three days in any city is enough and I'll, I'll stretch for you guys four days in any city is enough. So I know that I do travel long term now and I don't want to spend less than a month in any country but you can get pretty restless after three or four days. Um, it happens to me all the time, but I tend to take day trips or spend one day doing nothing. So then the next day I can have this jam packed itinerary filled day. But for the most part, you can see any city in like four days. I promise you, you do not need to go to Paris specifically and stay for two whole weeks or Prague for two whole weeks. Like you're good if you can dedicate four days maybe even three to that city and then move on to the next also this way you're seeing more cities or more countries which country hopping is a thing for me I remember taking a 12-day itinerary and turning it in to four different countries so I did London Copenhagen Amsterdam and Iceland all within like I want to say 10 days so 10 to 12 days it can be done and it doesn't have to feel rushed depending on how you work it my last tip for traveling with a full-time job and traveling more with a full-time job is to be open to where you're staying. So some of you may have a full-time job where you're making 100 k or more, you're in the six-figure range, or some of you may be making 40,000 bucks, 35, 60,000, and I have been there. I have been there in the, the 35k range, the 40s, I think. Yeah, I had a job where I was making about $40,000, maybe a little more, but it was around there. And I still managed to travel. It wasn't as much as I was when I was obviously making more or when I had more vacation days. And it definitely wasn't as much before I knew how to work the system that I knew to travel around weekends, holidays, you know, how to maximize that 10 day vacation time. But if I could go back to that, which I hope to never, but if I could, I would make it work and you would not see me sitting here all day. I would be in another country every chance I got. So this last tip is to be flexible with your lodging because I want you to know that yes, sometimes in addition to Airbnbs, I'm staying in hostels. I do stay in hotels from time to time, but to save money, I don't. I also don't feel like I'm going to get that authentic city experience by staying in a hostel. I want to live like a local and hostels aren't exactly living like a local, but I'm in the heart of everything, which staying in an Airbnb doesn't always afford me. I want to be able to get to everywhere. So say that I'm in the middle of the city in the hub and I can get to this neighborhood to interact with the locals. I can get to this one, this one, this one, and I don't have to come from like the edge of a city because I booked a because I booked an Airbnb and to come all the way to the city center or to go all the way to the other side of the city just to hang out in a certain place. I can get from point A to point B fairly quickly. Um, public transportation is usually dope. I don't really do Ubers when traveling, but that's also an option and they won't be confused about where to pick me up or there will be an abundance of a car service, whether it's Uber, Lyft, Grabber, um, whatever you use. 
So I say to be flexible with your lodging because I know that so many people are opposed to Airbnb. Um, they don't know who slept in these beds, but I'm like, people are in and out of hotels on a daily basis. At least I know that this Airbnb just may have downtime or they're not getting hundreds of people a week throughout these rooms and beds. Like, it's pretty, I, I would prefer the Airbnb over the hotel any day. Airbnb also has saved me so much money. You're getting more space, usually more amenities like a kitchen, and I'm saving money on not only maybe booking a week-long stay, but even if I booked a two-day stay, I'm saving money in the sense that it is cheaper than a hotel room, but also because I have access to this kitchen, I can buy breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or all three, and cook instead of having to go out because I don't have the option in a hotel. The only options I have in a hotel are to order room service, use their bar or restaurant, or go elsewhere and pay. Also with hostels, you could get a private room so it's kind of Airbnb-ish or it may feel like a hotel to you. Now I'm not choosing any hostel that pops up for the cheapest price. Sometimes I pay a pretty penny. Other times I pay more than I would spend on an Airbnb or maybe I saw a hotel that was cheaper than this hostel that I booked. Now the hotel wasn't that great, but it may have been cheaper than the hostel. Now I personally go with hostels so I don't isolate myself because I am 100% an introvert and I tend to prefer to be alone. But that's not always the vibe that I want when traveling. Sometimes I want to meet other people, connect with other travelers. If even, you know, we're about to go to bed but we're having a quick conversation. Like, I just, I'm not limiting human interaction in my life. So by staying in hostels, sometimes I can't say that I went to country X for a week and I spoke to literally no one outside of the server at my restaurant. Staying in hostels means I'm building these little relationships or having little conversations, maybe hanging out with people, getting tips and recommendations, giving them tips and recommendations. So it's more like a community thing and that's really why I stay in hostels a lot. I also love them because they're centrally located. They almost always offer free breakfast even though I rarely take it because it's usually just cereal and toast and I'm kind of good on that because they'll have cornflakes but not frosted flakes and who eats that? So usually I'll get up in the morning, I'll get a cup of tea. If I did see a cereal I liked one day then I would have that and then I'd be on my way to go explore the city a little more. I also rarely book a hostel that's more than four bed dorm and it's usually always all female. And the one time I didn't do that was in Amsterdam because everything is super expensive there. So I had to get a six big dorm because, not even because of the price, they were out of four bedrooms. And it was co-ed because they were out of all females. So it was what it was and it was fine. Not all six of us were ever in the room at one time except maybe when I was asleep. I don't know because I was asleep. But it saved me from spending like $200 a night, if not more, on a hotel room or 100 and something a night because I wanted my own room. So having roommates is not the best, but it's also not the worst. And I like my money in my wallet. So to recap how you can travel more with a full-time job. One, book that flight, ask questions later. Number two, compare. Make sure you're not spending even 50 bucks more on the flight than you should have. Number three, utilize your vacation days to work for you. Make them work for you. Book vacations around weekends and around holidays so that you have even more days to spend in another country or city. Whatever you want to do, make it work for you. And number four, be flexible with your lodging. I'm sure this is your least favorite tip, but check out what Airbnb and hostels can do for you. When it comes to hostels, I tend to book ones that really stand out to me. So I've stayed in hostels that were just gorgeous. I wish my house was decorated like them. They had a DJ in the lobby, bars in the lobby, rooftop bars. I stayed in one hostel in Bangkok where there was a slide taking you from the second floor down to the lobby. Like, who would not want to stay somewhere like that? They're usually super clean. I've never stayed in a grimy one and they're all around fun. So if you're not like me and you're a people person, I would say try a hostel out. Try it in the US before you go to Europe so you can get a feel for it. That's what I did when I traveled to San Francisco before going on my first international solo trip to Belize. I promise you it's nothing like the movie Hostel. They're not these grungy, dirt infested, uh, what are those bed bugs? I've never had those issues. They're not what you think. 
look at the pictures try something like hostelworld.com that's my go-to place and I'll drop the link below but try it out look at the pictures if you try it once and you hate it then fine never have to try again but I think you'll be pleased so be open thanks for watching guys I get it how I live it I live it how I get it come to motherfucking digits I pull it with a lemon not cause she ain't living it's just your eyes get acidic and this ain't a scrimmage motherfucker we ain't finished I told you we won't stop a nigga by the business like yours but you're renting wave hello to the top